Well, I grew up thinking that my mum had left me and had never come back. Like she'd be naked underneath her coat and she'd flash someone, she'd think it was hilarious. I did it with my mum at 15, I did it with my sister at 14. My life in Paris and my life in, in the UK, they must never know about each other <laughs> because if, if they knew, they wouldn't let me see my mum. And I didn't care how mad she was, I still wanted to see her. It was such a different time that you didn't ask people. Children didn't go, where's mummy gone? Or when's mummy coming back? I knew that I was a guest at my granny's house, but I wasn't. It had all been planned. My granny had been given my custody. My dad was coming down every weekend to, to be with me. Um, they were sort of sharing custody, but my dad was trying to make money in London and my granny was taking care of me day to day. And it had all been sorted. But I didn't know that because they just thought, well, she's young. She won't really remember or realise. Let's all just brush it under the carpet. And it's so interesting because nowadays with my children, everything that happens, we're like, how do you feel about that? Are you OK? Let's talk it through. Blah, blah, blah. Just didn't happen back in those days. So I grew up thinking that my mum had left me um, and had never come back. So at about probably four, maybe six months after after she'd gone, I realised that I wasn't going to live with her again, but I was left feeling guilty because I felt like my granny was looking after me and she didn't want me in some way. Not that she didn't, she was so loving to me, but somehow I was overstaying my welcome. So I think that was a defining moment because it set up a chain of events, a fear of abandonment that kind of made me make some really stupid decisions mm -hmm. all through my teenage years, into my 20s. Um, and, and something that I've worked diligently on since my early 20s to let go of. Why did your mother do that? Well, my mum grew up in France with two parents who were very loving but didn't know how to um, give her their time. So I think my mum needed time and contact, but they just gave her a lot of money. They were they were quite wealthy and they just, you know, at 18, they gave her a lump sum of money. She went and spent the whole lot on clothes and Yves Saint Laurent. She got a food disorder. She was very thin. It was the 60s. She was like a model. She had a Faye Dunaway nose job. She she was incredible looking, lots of drugs, quite a lot of drink, like crazy fun lady met my dad my dad was super hot like young guy they were an it couple he was so in love with her she was completely out of probably a sex addict when i when i look back at her life and unashamedly so the french are very she's french french are very different about sex she was kind of you know she was it's only bodies that was her catchphrase like you know oh it's only bodies. And you'd think, no, that's someone's husband. Like, that is, you know what I mean? So looking back, she she wasn't well herself, but she was so young. Like this was, we're talking 22, 23 when she met my dad. She'd already had a child at 16, been forced to marry the father of that child. They'd got divorced. Then she met my dad. So she was troubled herself, right? And my dad tried to help fix her, but it just wasn't going to work. And she ran off with someone else. Um, having had several affairs and everything. And my dad was broken hearted, absolutely broken hearted. And the courts in the UK, because I was born in the UK and had been brought up here, gave my granny and my dad custody, which was so rare. Mm. So um, I, I, I'm not sure how hard she fought. I'm not sure that she did, but um, that was what happened. But I did go and see her in the holidays, but that was... What do you mean? Well, quite crazy. Like, what did you see? I, oh my God, like, what didn't I see? I mean, my mum would, she would wear, this was quite a funny story. I mean, and some of it makes me laugh now, but it would be, she'd go out with me, like in a floor length electric blue coat, and we'd get out, and then she'd go like that to someone, and I'd think, she'd flash oh my them. God, she's naked. Yes. Like, she'd be naked underneath her coat, and she'd flash someone, she'd think it was hilarious. And I'd just be like, oh, oh, God, somebody, please, like, make the world disappear. 
But at times, it's really hard to explain, but I loved my mother. Like I really wanted her to pull some mummy business out the bag. Like I was like, come on, you can do this. And sometimes she'd give me a hug and I'd think, oh my God, this is it. Like, this is what it feels like to be hugged by mother. But then other times you'd be reading her, right? It'd be like, well, I've got to be, I've got to be a sweet little girl. Oh no, I'm going to have to take care of you. Or like now I have to be really good fun. I've got, I need to entertain you. It was always wearing a thousand different hats to see how she was going. And, and my granny used to say to me when we did start talking about it when I was older, she said, we'd have to like kind of, it would be funny for a month when you came back from France, you'd be a little bit on edge and we'd have to just really get you back into your favorite foods, a routine at bedtime, safety, reground me. So when I say I'm half nun, half wild child, it's because of that life that I've had, like drugs at 12 with my mum. Like You were doing drugs with Yeah, you? like smoking weed at 12, coke at 15, 14 with even. With your mum? I did coke with my mum at 15. I did it with my sister at 14. You know, it was like, it was, there was no, and then I'd get back to the UK and it would, it would be back into your secondhand clothes and s sort of safe, small life, like simple. My life was very simple. I mean, I say secondhand clothes just to give you an idea. I was in my granddad's jumper and an old pair of jeans and I get to Paris and they go, what are you wearing? Here's loads of money. Go and buy some posh loafers and get your hair done. And, and I'm 12, like I look like a proper Lolita. But I, and I'd quickly realized that my life in Paris and my life in, in the UK they must never know about each other <laughs> because if if they knew in the UK about my life in Paris, they wouldn't let me see my mum. And I didn't care how mad she was. I still wanted to see her. Does that make sense? Yeah. So my, my sister also was my lifeline in Paris. So my sister, who's six years older than me, even though we did do drugs together, and I know that sounds bad, but she was my rock. Like she was my... She grounded me when I was in Paris. So we stuck together. We understood what mum was like. We worked her together. Caroline. Yeah, Caroline, yeah. yeah. And then my mum, you know, but I, I did like going to Paris and also because I was young and they didn't stop me from doing anything. It was crazy. Having sat here with um, stand-up comedians, I remember Jimmy Carr said to me, he said, often it's assumed that comedians themselves are depressed and that they're cracking jokes to kind of cheer other people up in an attempt to cheer themselves up. But he said to me, you should actually ask them which one of their parents is depressed, which one of their parents were they trying to please and entertain? You said earlier, you know, did I have to be this one day? Or did I have to be a joker? Did I have to take care of her? Was your personality shaped by that, that desire to sort of keep her in good spirits or win over her, her affection? I think it taught me some amazing skills in reading people. So um, also my granny was unbelievably good at this as well. So people used to think my granny was psychic because somebody would walk in the room and she'd go, are you okay? Hmm. And they'd walk in smiling, but there would be a an eyebrow raise or a flicker of an yeah. eye or something. And she'd go, you all right? And they'd go, oh God, is your granny psychic? They're like, she can read me, yeah. she can see straight through me. I feel like being with my mother, she could walk, I could hear by the way she walked what person she was going to be when she walked through the door. I could hear the steps coming and I'd think, I know how to behave the minute she walks through that door. So that's an amazing gift. And that's how I choose to see everything that's happened to me. I am absolutely not a victim. Sure, some of it's been hard. And it's like you said, I'm happy. We were talking just before we started. I'm happy. And yes, life throws me curveballs but I choose to learn from those and still be happy rather than cling on to the curveball and let it pull me down. But I often wonder whether it's, it was the hardship that made me, when, you know, small wins or little wins in my life were massive. Oh, yeah. You know, a hug from my mum that felt a little bit like a parental hug rather than a needy mm. or an angry or... Uh, I, that would be a huge, like, I'd dine out on that for a month. I'd be like, oh, but yeah, but I got a hug two weeks ago that was epic. <sighs> you know, so I think you hold on to these little things. But I don't know, some kids might not, they might not see or feel that thing because they don't 
have that in them. I wonder whether we are born with it. It's such an interesting concept, positivity. Can you make yourself positive if you aren't? When you were like 16, 17, you, you know, you said you'd started doing drugs with your mother in, in France. But what did you want to be when you were older? If I'd asked you at I thought, 16... I probably, probably need to clarify, actually, that me and my mum only did drugs twice. Okay. I mean, I know that's twice times too many yeah. in my book, but... I don't want to give this impression that she and I were taking tons of drugs together because that would be a false impression. Okay. I just needed to plot, yeah, put that, to put that there. there, yeah. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favour, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests. Uh -huh.